Okay. So, uh, from the last video that I did, I said that I'd have a think about what else could be done to this game, uh, and then I'd come back to it and figure out what was left to do. Um, I managed to figure out what it was that was missing. Uh, that was sound. Um, so I'm just going to give you a quick example of what I've got so far. Uh, I've implemented a couple of basic laser sounds and a couple of explosions, uh, specifically leaving uh, one sound left to do. Um, so what you're going to hear now will be uh, a quick preview of what I've got. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to implement the, the death explosion for the player. Um, so let me just quickly show you. Hopefully this isn't too loud. Maybe just turn that down a little bit. Now you can probably hear that there's a couple of different variants to each of these. Uh, it just gives it a bit more, uh, makes it not get as tiring. Because <laughs> uh, with a lot of games, the, the sound design tends to be quite repetitive. Uh, and since it's one of the, the only uh, senses that you have whilst playing a game, it's a bit of a shame to just have it as an irritation rather than something that actually enhances the game. Um, so, probably one of the questions you're asking is um, how do I get access to sounds? Um, you know, because obviously hiring a sound designer is probably not going to be a cheap thing. Uh, it depends. Um, but for the sake of what, you know, what is the, you know, a, a, what might be a quick project, you want something that doesn't necessarily have to involve like some kind of commercial investment. Um, so what I would suggest that you use for now, uh, whilst you're just prototyping, which is what I tend to do, is I use a program called BFXR. .net, which is a really there's a downloadable version as well, which is is pretty good. Um, but if you search, you know, for this website, you could basically got yourself, um, you know, kind of all the sounds that you could potentially need for a, you know a basic 2D game. Obviously, you know, you still have the option to make random noises, um, but for what we're needing, we've got what we need. So, so I can. Just click on one of these, each, and change it up. I can also mutate the sound to make a different variant. So if I'm happy with the sound, I can mutate it to make a couple of different variations. Um, but for what I'm going to do, I'm going to be making an explosion sound. So I'm just going to quickly check what my current explosion sounds like for my enemies, because I want it to sound a bit different. Okay. That sounds pretty good. Yep, I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is now that I've found my sound that I'm happy with it, I'm going to export the actual file. Now the only problem we've got is that it's the wrong format, is that it's a WAV. Um, what we can do is we can change that to something that we can use. Uh, so I'm just going to save that. Um, now you could use something like Audacity. Uh, Audacity is a, a pretty good piece of software which, is, which works perfectly fine for this. Um, I might actually... I think I've got it. I'm going to be using Audition for this, but Audacity is, is a very sim similar workflow. Um, so that's one of the earlier sounds imported. Uh, I'm just going to add in. I go to my sounds.
the Audacity is a free piece of software you can download. It's really, really good. Um, so there's my explosion. All I'm going to do, and it's pretty much the same process in Audacity, you're going to go to File and Export, and you, you're going to export it as an MP3. In Stencil, uh, they basically list the, the requirements of the sounds that you need to have. Uh, and it all depends on what you're making it for. If you're making it for Flash, you want to use MP3s for pretty much everything else use uh, OGGs or Og Vorbis. Um, so yeah, the, the, kind of the key thing is, is that you want to have it set to you know, uh, you know 44100 uh, for your, your sample type and make sure it's the right file format and you've got no metadata. Uh, and other than that, that should be good. So then just click OK. Don't worry about that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to oh, cancel that. I'm going to go dashboard, and I'm going to create myself a new sound. Now there's two types of sound files that you can get in Stencil. Uh, I'm going to call this Player Explosion. 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 And um, there's two types of sounds that you can create in Stencil. Uh, there's a sound effect and music. Now the difference between them is they're stored differently because um, usually a sound effect is no more than a couple of seconds, whilst you know a you know a piece of music might last a lot longer. Uh, and if you store them as the wrong file type, it can cause your game to take a very very long time to load. Um, sound is actually one of the things that takes up the, probably the most memory in a lot of games. Um, so when you're importing stuff, uh, just be wary that. Uh, yeah, like if if you're not careful, sound can make up a, a f vastly slow down your loading times for your games. Um, <clears throat> so just something to be wary of. So now I'm going to actually make this sound that I've got. You know, this I'm going to make it trigger something in the game, uh, or, or be you know activate when triggered. Now, if I remember correctly, when my character dies, we have a in the level we have a piece of code that triggers to restart the level and to shape the screen so this piece of code here we're going to add this sound to so sound and images um, now I could just do play sound here but the problem with that is that it um, it tends to I'm trying to explain it if you're going to want to have lots of different sounds happening, you want to keep things on channels. Um, now, in this case, by the time the player's died, there shouldn't really be anything that is, is going to be needing to make sound, because in this, it's either the player's shooting or it's the enemies being hit by explosions. Um, but just to make sure, I'm going to put... I'm going to put it on channel 7, because if you look at my... Um, other actors, so it's my spaceship and my enemy. Um, I've assigned the three laser sounds, so you can see, you can see what I've got for these. So for the spaceship, what I've got is when space is pressed, I've created an attribute, and that attribute is a random number between one and three. And if the number of you know, the, the random noise is equal to one, you play this sound on a random channel between one and three and so on and so forth. Um, the reason I chose a random channel is because if you just have it play on the same channel um, what can happen is you, your, your audio cuts itself off um, before it's finished playing. So putting it on a random channel helps it kind of you know it, it reduces the, the, the probability of, of playing sounds on the same channel multiple times. Um, and it's the same setup for the enemy. Yeah. But for the player explosion, we only need one sound because it, it, it's something that happens over a longer period of time, so it's harder to uh, kind of you know, to get tired of hearing. Um, so, in our when spaceship is killed section, if you remember from looking at the spaceship and the enemy, we have the channels one to three 
and four to six uh, used. So we're going to use channel seven just in case there's any kind of likelihood of uh, the other channel's been active whilst we're, you know, being killed. Um, so that should be it for that. So let's just give that a quick test and see if our player now makes an explosion sound when he's killed. Um, and then after this, um, there's a couple of other things I could show you in stencil. Um, but I think I might save those for another tutorial. Um, it's kind of just like little tweakery kind of things. Uh, more to do with like your export settings and things like that. Um, the thing I'm going to focus on primarily is how you export an SWF uh, or other file from um, Stencil now. So that's just, so you hear that there? So that's me getting killed. I'll just drop the volume a little bit so you don't get deafened. Oh, too polite. There we go. Oops. Oh. Oh, there we go. So you can hear it's kind of quite a satisfying explosion when you know, you're getting beaten. Um, so now, what I want to do is I want to export. So the way I'm going to do that is very simple. You go publish, web, flash. And literally just giving that a couple of seconds to uh, compile. What it'll do is it'll pop up with the, a window in a second, which will ask where you want to save the file. I'm just going to save it to desktop to make it easy. Um, and remember that within settings you could change how you want your game to kind of fit to the screen. So you could have it. Um, you could have it. You know, scale to match the size of the screen. You, I, I believe. Oh, and if you're wondering, this isn't showing up the shortcut, but it's basically SWF, the, the file format. So if I click Save, there you go. You can say, see that it's actually been exported now, which is great. So if I just click on this now. And I got myself a little game. Cool. Um, so that'll do it for now. Uh, in the next, well, in, uh, coming up next, there's going to be uh, a tutorial, a basic tutorial on uh, kind of basic player movement uh, in a platformer setup, uh, and then triggers uh, between objects, um, which will kind of be like a very, very basic tutorial for for uh, a platformer. And then following that, I'm going to be putting together a top-down shooter um, tutorial, which I've already constructed the game for. It's just a matter of uh, <laughs> building the tutorial around it. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, stay tuned for more, and hope everything goes well with your uh, projects, whatever you're planning to make with the information from this.